In today's adventure of an episode, we're reading some more Entitled Parents. Definitely going to be a wild ride, and I hope you guys are excited. There will also be a compilation at the end of this episode. So yeah, going to be a lot of Entitled Parents today. Enjoy, guys. My dad is charging half of my paycheck in rent. I'm not going to be able to move safely if he doesn't stop. I'm scared and I don't know what to do. I love him because he's my dad, but I feel like he's mostly seen me and my sister as dollar signs. My brother doesn't have to pay rent and he's 31. I'm 21. I'm going to start my out of college job soon and I will be making a good amount. And he'll be getting a full mortgage payment out of me from my paycheck. He has direct access to my bank account and he's also holding my savings account hostage, saying that if I skip out, he takes it all. I don't have access to my savings account at all and it has everything I've saved since I was 12. He has joked about taking what's left of my college fund that I saved myself and going on an expensive vacation. I haven't relied on him financially since my mother died and he's not poor. He gets paid $60 an hour and he brags about his high paycheck a lot. He doesn't have a gambling problem or any addictions he needs to pay. He just wants control over me to keep me from leaving. I'm worried if this continues I'll never want to see him again. Oh my god I'm so sorry OP. What an awful situation. There's a comment here that says first open your own bank account at another bank, then start compiling any evidence you have that the money in the savings account is yours, and also how much is in there. Texting your dad simple questions about the account that establish that it's yours. Try to get bank statements, etc. And then take his ass to court to get your money back if he steals it. Take back control of your life. Yeah, all the best with this OP. The dad sounds awful. My best friend's entitled stepdad is charging her $750 for not loading the dishwasher. What? <laughs> My best friend Ellie, 22 female, moved back in with her mum, 50 female, and stepdad, 55 female, two years ago. She has two brothers, Ben, 18 male, and JJ, 15 male, that also live in that tiny trailer. Just yesterday, Tuesday, the 2nd of the 1st, Ellie and her stepdad got into an argument over the dishes. She's been working 10 hour night shifts the entire week and was too tired to load the dishwasher. She just started a new job as a supervisor in a grocery store. He lit into her, calling her fat and lazy and other nasty nasty stuff. And then the following morning, Wednesday, she sent me a screenshot of the message you sent her. This is verbatim. Ellie, for this incident to be forgotten, you will owe me personally $350 and we will be adding $400 to your rent this month. We treat you no different from Ben. If you refuse to accept this punishment, then you have a week from this Sunday to move out. Also, in the meantime, you're expected to still help out with what's needed. JJ needs to be picked up at 6.30 tonight. If you refuse to help out, you'll be out of this house by this Sunday at noon. The ball is in your cord. I expect answers by the time I get home tonight. I am beyond furious that this slime ball has the audacity to say that they treat her no differently from her brothers. When that's complete BS, her brother Ben is 18, is working a full-time job and does not have to pay rent or bills or is expected to help out around the house like she is. And all this time she's been struggling to save money so she can return to school and study programming. But this bully keeps on knocking her down for the littlest transgressions. Her mother does nothing to help her and neither do her brothers. She's stuck in a cramped, unwelcome trailer with a monster for a patriarch. Edit, I just found out that her regular rent rate is $400. That means that he's asking her for $1,150 total. Ridiculous. I'm also trying to convince her to at least consult a lawyer through a free legal service advice site, suggested from the ND Legal Self-Help Guide. Edit to update. We've safely and successfully moved her into a room in our basement. Oh yay, that's awesome. She will finally have her own space and bathroom. She says she will go low contact with her parents. Wow, that's so awesome, OP. I was gonna say, she needs to get out of there so soon. And yeah, good on you for helping her out, OP. And were they trying to get her to move out? Like saying stuff like, you owe me $350 and also $400 in rent for the month. And if you refuse, you can move out. Like, yeah, anybody in this situation would love to move out. Acting like leaving would be bad. But yeah, that's so awesome to hear that you helped her out, OP. Hopefully things will be looking a lot better soon. I forgot how wild this subreddit is. Mum signs a contract and then expects her unwitting child to pay. I work in the funeral business. Some of the most backhanded and entitled family behavior happens here. Today, we had a lady who signed a contract to buy a grave back in 2020 and then has not made a single payment towards it. She got a letter saying that she has until the end of her payment plan, December 2024, to pay in full or the grave she signed for will be essentially repossessed and put back into the inventory. Today, she comes in in a half demanding to know why the grave will be repossessed. She openly admitted that she didn't make any payments towards 
towards the grave because eventually I'm going to die and when I do, my daughter will get all of my money so she can pay for the grave then. Essentially, she signed a contract agreeing to pay five grand and then was just assuming that if she didn't pay, we would just keep the grave on hold and then it could be her child's financial responsibility after she dies and then she had the nerve to get upset and throw a tantrum because we said we wouldn't hold the grave that she didn't pay for. Wow, that's hilarious in an aggravating sort of way. Like, what the hell are you talking about? Some people must genuinely be so delusional. Like, how is this a real person? And how is that a thought process they had? Like, oh yeah, it'll totally be fine. No, it won't. <laughs> oh, that's so annoying. I kicked my mum out for never helping with the bills. And apparently she's living in her car now. So for reference, I'm a single 28-year-old mother that has a 10-year-old son. My son's dad and I share custody, sometimes 50-50 and sometimes I have the majority. And he does help me most of the time that I travel for work. However, lately, my mother has complained about the fact that she has to watch my son sometimes while I go to work. She sends me angry messages saying that she's a free babysitter, free maid, etc. Years ago, I used to pay her for her help and she's always lived with me for free. Ever since I started working at 18 when she lost her own steady job, it was the final straw for me hearing that from her recently and I lost my crap. So I recently gave main custody to my son's dad and I'm now paying him back for the child support that he gives me every single month. I still see my son on days that I don't work or I have a shorter shift. For the past 10 years, my mum has never held a steady job and I've had to cover rent, utilities and phone bills, etc. This month she started a new job. I also offered her a part-time job with my friend's company for $30 an hour. All I asked is that she gives me $400 a month to help with the bills, especially since now I'm no longer receiving child support. She told me that she was just going to live out of her car and she turned down the part-time. This morning I told her to leave and I took her key. We've tried family therapy but it's expensive for me to keep up with every session. I am feeling hurt but also relief that I don't have to deal with her crap. However, I feel bad that she's in her car in 40 degree weather. It's not the first time that she has done this and I'm really stuck on what to do. Last time that she went to live in her car was during a fight that we had and I begged her not to leave and to come back. She was there for three days until her battery died. This time I let her go since I'm so tired of her crap. The only thing that we fight about literally all the time is finances and how much she hates taking care of my son while I work. Edit, I don't have another support system other than my ex's family and my mum. I'm 1099 so I travel a lot for work and I work a lot of night shift. For this reason I gave my ex the majority. However, we do coordinate with each other and I now have my son on days that I don't work. Yeah, the top comment, she's waiting for you to come begging again. Stop the cycle. She's an adult and she can figure it out. And yeah, she's doing this to herself and trying to make you feel guilty about it, but you don't need to feel guilty. You're not doing this to them, OP. Like it says here, I feel bad that she's in her car in 40 degree weather, but you don't need to feel bad. They're choosing to do this. And yeah, good on you for standing up for yourself, OP. Entitled mum insists on knowing my salary and my spouse's. Every time I get a job, she wants to know how much I now make and whether it makes more and if the benefits are better. Last job, I finally caved after 20 years and I told her I make over six figures. I gave a number. I got a new job and the pay hasn't really changed, but the benefits have, going to a smaller company. Anyway, she asked and I was quiet as to whether it paid more. So then she kept on pestering and pestering me and asking why I won't tell her my new salary and how she needs to know it to know that I'm doing well. Then I put on a huge act and said, I make gobs and gobs and I'm doing amazing. It sounded phony. She also demanded to know my spouse's salary. She said it so she knows whether my husband is capable of supporting me. What the hell? I didn't give her any numbers this time. And she went on a tirade about how it's like I hate her. And she can tell I seethe with hatred and I won't sit next to her at dinner when we see each other. I moved out of state. She doesn't give a crap about my kids or husband and insists on talking to me with her face really close to me the entire time for 12 hours straight. It's exhausting. She asked me why we don't have a normal relationship. And I told her it's because she doesn't respect my boundaries. She ignores the fact that my dad has ghosted us and she doesn't care about my family. Ironically, my spouse's parents have never asked and I do tell them what I make without any issues because they respect my boundaries. Wow, that sucks. It's none of their business. The top comment says, never, never, I repeat, never give her any information. My mum is also like this. When I was young, she would ask me what my friend's parents do, check my wallet, go through my drawers, etc. Back then, I couldn't do anything because I lived with my parents. When I moved away, she couldn't do this anymore, but she still hasn't changed. She's still asking about my finances and about my husband's job. Sometimes she would say, your uncle or your aunt's asked about blah, blah, blah. My answer, you should tell them that it's none of their business or tell them to ask me direct. I think your mum, like mine, wants to know about everything and thrives on being the first to know about stuff. When my mum pushed me for information, I asked her back, why do you need to know? 
It doesn't concern you. You can't do anything even if you do know. I never gave her a straight answer. Yeah, that's so annoying. It's none of your business. I'll give you your own room, but there must be a CCTV camera inside. Hi, I'm a 17-year-old senior high student. I grew up basically sleeping next to my guardians and now my mum. Broken family. I've never really begged for my own room, but I've showed interest in the idea to my family, all of which are females, lesbians, etc. And now my mum decides to move out of our current place. Everything we need is inside one room. She hesitantly told me about having my own room, and I said of course I'd love to, but there must be a CCTV inside the room. No, there does not. I told her that's illegal and all that, hackers and stuff, and I'd feel uncomfortable, especially how I'm turning 18 this year. She said that she'd keep the camera pointed at the corner of the room where the door and computer is, because she wants to make sure that I don't sleep late, but keep the bed and the closet away from the view. I couldn't really say no since now she's insisting on it. Call me a rude child, but I do think it's also because she wants privacy with her partner and her own room, as well as not having to worry about going home drunk with a student that needs to wake up early in the morning. Although I do accept my current situation and already have plans to prove that she doesn't need it because I'm capable, I just don't know how to feel about this whole situation, especially since I don't have the heart to do the suggested things on other posts about parents and CCTVs, with all the break it and point it somewhere else or remove the plug, maybe if I convince myself enough I can, but I just really don't want any unnecessary yelling. I don't know what I should be feeling or need to do really? Should I just go with my plan to suck it up and prove them otherwise? No, definitely not. Somebody who's already doing this probably isn't gonna listen. They can't put a bloody CCTV camera in your room. That is so not okay. Yeah, no, I wouldn't be going along with this. You need your own privacy and I don't really feel like you can prove it to them to remove it. If they're already doing stuff like this, they're not gonna listen. Oh, that's an awful situation and that's all I've got for today, guys. They were the top posts of the week on the entitled parent subreddit. I'll make sure I make a new episode on here super soon. But for now, let's read something wholesome and then compilation time. I made an old lady blush today at work because she ordered two senior coffees and I said, senior? I'm sorry, miss. I'm going to have to ask to see some ID. And she covered her mouth and went, oh dear me, and couldn't stop smiling. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> you would have completely made their day too. Little stuff like this is so beautiful. My dog's pillow fell to the roof a couple of days ago. It has a new owner now. That's so cute and so funny. Like, oh my god, my lucky day. The most soft and beautiful thing fell out of the sky. That cat would be so happy. In sixth grade, I forgot the science fair was the next day. 10 p.m. in a panic, I find a loaf of moldy bread. I made a study on mold, moisture, and air. I got second place in the school, fifth in the city. The bread was so moldy, I was praised for conducting weeks of research. No way, that's so funny. I hope that's real. That's hilarious. Oh my god, I can't believe you let bread get so moldy. Amazing. Like that episode where Lisa accidentally creates life. Oh boy, mold. <gasps> Tiny little people. And on that beautiful note, thank you for watching everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time. If you did and you want to see more Entitled Parents episodes, make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today goes to Bella. I'm a nurse and I don't get a lot of chances to de-stress on my breaks or after work. But Vincy videos get me through it. Thank you for all your hard work, dude. Oh, wow, that's so awesome. I'm so happy you enjoyed the episodes. Thank you for watching them. I really appreciate the support. Hell yeah, that's so awesome. I'm so happy they help a little bit. And yeah, guys, thank you for all your support. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day and enjoy the compilation. My entitled neighbor wanted to join us for dinner. My husband wasn't home and it was just me with my two children and my cousin who was visiting. It was raining outside and my neighbor rang the doorbell. Let's call her Elaine. She said that she was locked out of her house and needed to wait for her husband. I don't know this neighbor very well. We recently purchased our home. I said that she could wait in the entryway of our home. There was a bench and she could play with her phone. She asked if she could join us for dinner and I said I don't know her very well and my husband isn't home. She said that she doesn't mind. Well, what? I said, but I mind because it's a safety issue. She said that she feels safe and that I shouldn't worry. I said, I don't feel safe. She got quiet for 30 seconds and said that she's an occupational therapist and a healthcare professional, so we should feel fine. I said, no, she can wait in the hall or she can leave. I'll bring her a bowl of food. She was on the phone for three hours and yelling, saying how we're horrible people for not letting her in. She poured the bowl of soup I gave her 
into my kid's shoes in the shoe rack opposite the bench she was sitting on in the hallway. I can't believe she thought she was entitled to come into a stranger's home. What? <laughs> Is that real? Pouring the soup that you gave them, which you didn't need to give them, into your kid's shoes? What's wrong with people? Oh my god. Edit. The hallway in my home is 12 feet long and has two closets, a long shoe box and a bench. The hallway and entryway is the entrance into my home. There's a door leading into the house at the end of the hall and it locks. This door opens into a greater hall that separates the kitchen and the living room. The door leading into the actual home part of the house is always locked and I locked it and I didn't let her in there. She wanted to go inside and eat in the kitchen with my kids and cousin. I don't know her very well. I did give her food and I allowed her to come inside the hallway entryway bit because it was raining. We were in the kitchen and we heard her on the phone for hours and didn't know what to do. We recently moved into this neighborhood. We waited for her to leave and we went into the hall. Saw the mess that she made by pouring the soup into the kids' shoes. The shoes were washed immediately and the shoe box was wiped down. If I had known her better and or if my husband was home, I would have invited her inside. Holy, not going to be letting them in again or anywhere near your house. And also, what do you mean they were there for three hours? That's so long for them to just sit there. If this happened to me, I feel like I wouldn't even be able to believe that it actually did happen. It sounds like a weird dream or something. A neighbor asked me when I'm cleaning an apartment. First time posting, also English isn't my first language. My male 37 upstairs neighbor was found after three days lying on the floor of his apartment. Oh God, an ambulance took him away. I heard the banging on his door. I found out what happened and I spent the next three days finding out which neighbor had the spare key and then rescued his dog. A sweet 18 year old Jack Russell. So far it's been three weeks that I've been taking care of his dog. Bought food, showered her, four walks a day, the works. I live in a Hasidic Jewish neighborhood, which means that very few people have dogs. No one else would have taken her, but she's very recognizable in the neighborhood. An older woman from the building next door asked me if this dog was my sick neighbors. I said yes. She then asked me when I'm going to clean his apartment. I asked her why doesn't she? She got all flustered at me. My sick neighbor is a widower without kids. He doesn't really know how to treat a dog, but he loves her and spoils her like a child. He's a lovely man, but clearly with problems I won't go into. His apartment was a biohazard. Edit and update. This story isn't to complain about my community. Most communities are more complex than what they seem. And while I would not like to live the way that ultra-orthodox live, I have no problem with them living how they wish. I wouldn't want to be Amish either. I do have a problem with their political leaders, but we can live in disagreement. Please don't make this a race thing. I am not an immigrant here. The lady was just assuming things because I was helping. Apparently my grandpa was her doctor. My neighbor's still in rehab. Doggo is still with us until his pop is better. Right, okay, so they assumed that it was your responsibility or something. Good on you for taking care of the dog. I'm a bit confused whether they're entitled or just sort of confused. But yeah, good on you for making sure the dog's okay. Entitled person tries to skip the entire Will Cole line because he just needs to pick up his tickets real quick with a Starbucks bonus. I think about this guy every now and then and giggle. I was in the Will Cole line at a Renaissance festival a few years back. It was before they had an online cell phone ticket system. So if you bought online, you had to get your tickets at Will Cole. This led to a very long line at Will Cole. I was standing in line to pick ours up and a man walked up and was standing next to me, looking at the counter and then kind of tried to get in front of me. I pointed out that the line was behind me and he said, oh yeah, but I just have to grab my Will Cole tickets real quick. It won't take long. I stared him dead in the eye and said, yes, we all do. That's why we're in the Will Cole line picking up tickets. He said again, well, I'll be real quick. They've just left it Will Cole for me. I again repeated, right, this is the Will Cole line. All of us have tickets at Will Cole, where the line I'm standing in has formed. If you want to get your tickets, you need to go to the back of it. He threw his hands down in a half and walked to the back of the line. I thought of him again recently when I was in the drive-thru at Starbucks. Some guy in a Mercedes convertible with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth pulled up going the wrong way on the other side of the car in front of me that was at the window. He asked the customer to ask the person handing out coffee to give the customer his mobile order and then pass it to him through their window so we didn't have to wait in line or get out of his car to get it. Thankfully, the Starbucks employee told him to kick rocks and wait in the drive-thru or come in. Why are people like this? I don't know, but it's so infuriating. Like, it was infuriating to read about this, let alone be in that situation. We do need a t-shirt that says the audacity on it. The audacity of some people. Our neighbors took our fence while we were on a road trip. Perhaps there's a better subreddit for this post, but this is the first one I thought to go to. Well, the title explains most of this, but I'm fuming right now, so I gotta rant this one out. So, we've had issues with our attached neighbours from the moment that we bought our house. Originally, it was just 60-something female and her 18-something male grandson. The day we moved in, we tried to
tried to make small talk and introduce ourselves. The woman was dropping hints that the old owners used to bake her goodies all the time and she missed it. That's a bit rude, isn't it? Kind of insinuating that we should be like them because she deserved to be treated like a princess. The grandson introduced himself as the worst person in town. What an intro. So afterwards, we just tried to keep a friendly distance and stay out of their way. Suddenly, after about a week of living here, they began screaming at odd hours, blasting music and banging on the walls. The police were at their house for domestic disputes monthly due to the woman calling the cops on her grandson. We've lived here for over two years now, fixing up our house and making it beautiful and adding value to it. Up until this point, we've let them have their problems because it's not like we have kids to worry about protecting. It's just my partner and I in our mid-twenties. Fast forward to last month, one evening after it got dark, we heard what we thought were gunshots right in our backyard. Mind you, we live in a downtown suburb with an older person facility right behind our house, so we were a little concerned. We have cameras that we installed just to be safe, so we checked them. The grandson and his friends were sitting in their yard talking about shoot another round. They'll just think it's fireworks. And that's a 45 round. Unfortunately, it was dark and we couldn't see them shoot it, but the camera picked up the sound of them shooting off nine rounds, so we naturally called the cops. The kids then left and the cops couldn't prove that anyone was on the premises with a gun, so they let it go. In the beginning of August, the woman decided to let her daughter, sister-in-law, and their children move in with them, for who knows what reason. Before this, they'd only come to visit on holidays and at one time they left their infant child on the street in a carrier for over half an hour until I knocked and let them know that she was out there. None of my business, but from there on the screaming and yelling got worse and this time with crying kids in the mix. I had half a mind to call CPS, but I've heard the awful things that happen to kids in the system, so I couldn't bring myself to do it. This month, we were fortunate enough to go on a road trip to see some cool places and visit family. We left the end of August and we were checking our cameras when we had service, which was not much. One day we get a call from our unattached neighbor saying that our attached neighbors were building a really ugly shed with spare planks from who knows where. We tried not to worry too much because up to this point, their crappy shed wasn't our problem. Besides being an eyesore in the neighborhood, we just enjoyed the rest of our trip and let it go. Occasionally checking to make sure they weren't in our yard or anything since it's nicely fenced in and gated. Didn't catch anything on camera, but then building their crappy shed. We arrived home a few hours ago to find that they dug out and stole a part of our fence, metal post and chain link fence to create a back fence and gate for their yard. This left huge holes in our back parking area that my partner almost tripped and fell into. They also tied it into our fence incorrectly, pulling our fence lopsided, basically damaging it. Unfortunately, our camera didn't catch them taking our fence. It was just in our yard in one frame and then in theirs the next. We want to press charges, but we aren't sure how to go about it. We checked our seller's disclosure stating that the previous owners of our house had to put the fence in, so we know it was our fence that they took. I'm so livid and I know yelling at them won't fix it, but how can you be so entitled that you can't even buy your own chain link fence, but instead you steal your neighbors when they aren't home? Thank you for reading this rant. Entitled people suck. Yeah, oh my god, they 100% do suck. They left a comment here that says, as of where we stand after speaking to the, I don't, is it bureau or burrow? I'm not good with words, guys. A few hours ago, it seems that the fence is on the easement and they'll be facing retaliation for taking it out without permission. Also, they did not get a permit for their shed and they will either have to pay the permit fee or remove it within a certain amount of time. I feel like we won this a little, but also still concerned for our safety, considering that we were the ones that brought up the shed being unpermitted. Even if we got some reimbursement from homeowners, we'd probably do the work ourselves regardless, so I don't know if it would cost as much since labor wouldn't be an issue. Yeah, wow, I can't even imagine living next to somebody like this or living next to people like this. That's so infuriating. Entitled siblings demand that I help them move. My sibling is moving out of their current apartment into another one. They first loudly stated that I don't need anyone to help me move. But after a while, they kept calling me, complaining that it's so much to do and whining that no one is helping. I just said, hmm, knowing fully well what would come next. They asked, you don't want to help me, which I declined. They said, okay, in a sad tone. A day later, my mum calls me and said that my sibling is so sad and disappointed that I won't help them. I couldn't care less. They never helped me move either or even visited me for an evening. I did help when they moved into that apartment and several times later with my car, even when they previously called it ugly AF, but then it's good enough to haul stuff because it's a big truck. They also lightly insulted me a day before and much more times over the year. I even thought about taking a break from our relationship. Now they expect me to help them move. No, you don't get to threaten people and make fun of their belongings and still get help from them. Yeah, I hope the wholesome memes are good today. We're gonna need it after this. Entitled mum demands I give up my airline seat because her child deserves it more. Sorry, I'm on a five hour flight for a work conference. I booked a window seat because I like to lean against the wall to sleep. I board the plane, settle in and everything 
everything seems fine. Then enters Entitled Mum, EM and her kid EK. Entitled Mum staring at me. Um, you're in our seats. Me, I don't think so. This is 23A, right? Entitled Mum, yes, but my son really wants to look out the window. Oh my god, what? Me, I booked this seat specifically, sorry. Entitled Mum, well, my son has never flown before and he should get to experience it. You should give your seat to him. He deserves it more. That's not how that works. <laughs> People are so annoying. Me, I understand, but I also paid for this seat. At this point, the flight attendant, FA, comes over to see what the commotion's about. Flight attendant, is everything all right here? Entitled mum. No, he won't let my son sit by the window. Flight attendant, ma'am, the seats are assigned and he's in the correct seat. Entitled mum, this is outrageous. My child deserves this experience. Flight attendant, I can't change assigned seats. You'll have to sit in your assigned seats. Entitled mum huffs and puffs but finally takes her assigned middle seat next to me, muttering about how some people are so selfish. Five hours sitting next to entitled... Yeah, I was about to say, do you have to sit next to them? Five hours sitting next to entitled mum was not fun, but I held onto my window seed. My comfort was worth more than her entitlement. So yeah, that's my experience. I can't believe people like this actually exist. Wow, me neither. That's so bad. They genuinely feel like their kid deserves it. For what reason? <laughs> like, what's the logic here? It doesn't make any sense. Well, if you felt like they deserved it, maybe you should have paid for it. <laughs> but yeah, that's right. How is this real? How is a person being like, you know what? This is a very reasonable thing to say. I'm going to try and get somebody out of a seat that they paid for because I feel like it should go to my kid. No, okay. Entitled guy demanded my wi- Oh my god, another one? Entitled guy demanded my window seat for an 11 hour flight to Cairo. This was a while back but an excellent example of sheer entitlement. Flight from New York to Cairo. The seat configuration was three rows of seats, two window and aisle on each side with four or five middle seats in the center. I had a window over a wing. I chose the seat with sleep in mind many months in advance. While I do frequently travel, I'm not going to pretend I often jet away to eat. Egypt. So this vacay was very planned out. I was settled into my seat when my aisle mate approached his and asked if I'd be willing to switch with his wife so the two of them could sit together. The two of them seemed to be with a group of similar age travellers. It appeared to me based on chatter that it may have been some kind of group tour, knowing the industry and that organisers may be negligent in seat assignments. I was absolutely willing to consider a swap if the seat was comparable. So naturally I asked where his wife's seat was. He pointed and she waved at me from the centre of the middle seats. No, sorry, I'm going to keep my seat was my response. Instead of switching out with a middle seat person who I'm sure would have been delighted to take an aisle so we could sit next to his wife, he sits down in his seat and started trying to argue with me. How the view is bad anyway since it's over the wing. I won't see anything since it's mostly overnight and dark etc. I just replied that I plan to sleep against it and I decline again. I'm trying to be pleasant, I'm a pleaser and I'm stuck next to this guy. He continues to bug me like the mosquito he may have been in a former life and asked me, if you had a husband wouldn't you want to sit with him? At this point I'm totally irritated. I stated that I do have a husband and if my husband and I were travelling together, I'd not only ensure that our seats were assigned together, but if they weren't, I'd give up my aisle and go sit with my spouse in the middle. He then shut up with direct comments but grumbling persisted throughout the entire flight, just not to my face as he pretended to ignore my existence. Perfect ending. He was still grumbling when we deplaned. No way! <laughs> oh come on, I know I'm being super rude and unreasonable. But just do what I say because the whole world revolves around me, okay? Like as frustrating as these posts are, they're so fun to read. I think I'm genuinely addicted. Entitled Random thinks I'm his secretary. So this one was a few years back. Some people I knew from back home were using my phone number for various things at quick loan places. I changed my number and I sorted it out. Two years after getting my new number, I'm still getting random calls and messages for the guy who previously had that number. Crappy job offers, hookup offers, random requests for favorites which was annoying, but I just kept saying wrong number and carrying on with my day. One day I'm chilling with a friend of mine and I get a phone call from a number I don't know. I answer it and it turns out to be the guy that previously had the number and this mother flipper has the nerve to start trying to quiz me about who phoned for him like I was writing it all down. He actually got mad at me for not somehow informing him about the job offers. I told him I was not his secretary and to get off his lazy ass and tell these people he changed the numbers before hanging up on him, promptly changed my my number again afterwards and wow was it nice not answering at least one message a week. Yeah, what? And the fact that they're not apologising to you for this being such a pain is hilarious. Like buddy, you've got it all wrong. I shouldn't be apologising to you. You should be apologising to me. Yeah, that's so unbelievable. Let me know down below if you're enjoying this
in the episode so far, guys. To say I'm enjoying this is an understatement. Entitled friend messes around and finds out. I've known Colette for over a decade. She has kids from a previous relationship and is one of those obnoxious parents, the kind who honestly believe that her toddlers are perfectly behaved angels who can be taken anywhere and never cause any upset. She's completely delusional and thinks that her kids never cry or have emotions other than sunshine and maturity beyond their years. Correct me if I'm wrong, but kids who are like that tend to be that way due to fear of consequences, painful consequences. Colette isn't the greatest human, but she also doesn't abuse her kids. She's actually on the other end of the spectrum and spoils them rotten. Earlier this year, she married a single dad. This did put a strain on her relationship because I wouldn't listen to her bad mouth her stepson, who I'll call Caleb, age seven. Caleb is on the spectrum and has some issues with impulse control and emotional regulation. He's in therapy for that, but Colette hates him regardless. I could endure listening to her delusions about how perfect she thinks her kids are, but shut her down for the nasty things she tried to say about Caleb. What remained of our friendship broke entirely a few months ago. That was when Caleb's mum said that she needed a break and his dad needed to step up. Colette lost her mind. I'll let your imagination fill in the blank for all of the ableist and hateful trash that she vomited. I told her that she should have known this was a possibility. Isn't it obvious that if you date someone with minor children, that you have to be prepared that they could be a full-time responsibility? Colette screamed that of course she knew, but that only applied if Caleb's mother died. It wasn't fair that she ruined Colette's fairy tale romance where her new husband stepped in as dad for her kids and Caleb was someone else's problem. Oh God. I heard through the grapevine that Colette is getting divorced. Apparently she told her husband that her kids are perfect and his are not and he has to choose the better family that they created, her, her two kids and him, or the quote unquote out of control brat even his ex doesn't want anymore. And of course he chose Caleb. Knowing Colette, she's probably angry at everyone but the person who actually causes the mess, herself. God, that's awful. I know the word toxic gets used a lot, but people like this are so toxic and it's so good that they're not putting up with it either. You gotta distance yourself from stuff like this. My entitled mother threw a fit over her gift that she picked herself. Originally, she wanted this designer bag in a bucket bag style. Sold out, so I pick a bag similar to it, in the same color and a different style. Weeks later, she sees another purse that she likes, and she asks if I can return the other one and get this one instead. Before purchasing it, I told her several times that I didn't like it, or the material the purse was made of and mentioned that the leather was too soft, because there were already scratches on it, and she insisted I get it. So I did. Christmas morning comes, and I ask if she wants to open her gift and she says no. Later after dinner, when everybody was opening their gift, she pushes it off again. She finally opens up and starts complaining. She complains about how it was all messed up and how she wanted to return it. I told her I couldn't because it was discounted and sold as is. She responded that she was still gonna return it. I reminded her again how I told her I don't think she should get it. And of course her response was, I don't remember that. I'm fed up and I'm now heartbroken because no matter what I do, it seems like it's never enough. I asked how it was even possible that you found fault and dislike something that she picked out herself and something else that makes this whole situation worse is she didn't even get anyone anything for Christmas. Not even my little sisters whose birthday was on Christmas. Update. My mum told my brother that she no longer wanted the purse because it wasn't what she expected even though she saw it in person and picked it out herself. Not only that but I asked if I can talk to her so I can express how she made me feel and she told me that she doesn't want to talk to me because I was rude to her. Oh I'm so sorry OP that's so frustrating. And yet they're not even grateful a little bit. And by the sounds of it, they're trying to make drama. Are they one of those sorts of people who has to make an issue out of everything? Or actually kind of enjoys complaining and making a fuss? Because it definitely feels like it. And yeah, like you said, has the audacity to complain about this, but doesn't get anybody else a present. Yeah, that sucks. And I don't really know what you do in a situation like this. Yeah, like the top comment says, oh my God, she's cruel. Nothing will ever be good enough for her. So stop trying to please her. Hopefully you can get your little sister away. From now on, get her exactly what she got everybody else. Sell the purse and give the money to your sister. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Like, yeah, if they're not happy with it, take it back and don't replace it. They don't deserve anything. The next one is called My Cousin Sends Our Family Her Child's Christmas List Each Year and it's completely insane. Every November, I, 24 female, receive a dreaded text in our extended family group chat from my cousin, 35 female. The text always includes a highly detailed Christmas list from her five-year-old 
Lord, who will call Penny. The items are always expensive, obscure, and very hard to find. Additionally, she expects us to reply with the item that we have purchased, and then sends back the updated list with the item checked off. Each year, there's the exact number of items for the people in the chat. And once people hurry to claim the cheapest ones, you're left with the $100 to $300 items to choose from. Wait a second, no, this is awful. This is such a rude thing to do, and it completely defeats the purpose of you guys buying a present. You're meant to choose something that you think is going to be a good gift for somebody, which makes it personal. There's nothing nice about them just telling you what to buy and you buying it, and yet then you feel obligated to buy something, something expensive too. Yeah, no, if I were you, OP, I wouldn't be going along with stuff like this. My cousin is an only child, and her mum caters to this, as well as her dad. But the rest of us are getting pretty sick of it. Yeah, well then don't buy stuff. Last year, somebody didn't follow the list, and said they'd already bought something else in the group chat, and she responded that isn't what Penny wants this year, which made them feel guilty for not adhering to this insanity. Oh my god. This one's infuriating. Okay, so now some backstory. Penny has autism, is non-verbal, and is the sweetest child ever. My cousin and her husband are good parents for the most part, but they're a little self-focused. For example, they're both collectors of things like manga and toys, and they lose their minds if Penny touches their things, and their home is full of their collections. They have an entire room dedicated to this, which they call the fun room, and their daughter isn't even allowed in. Not so fun. Now here's the kicker. The items on the list are almost always part of a collection, either vintage, certain edition, this or that, and tons and tons of Beanie Babies. They have started a toy collection similar to their own for Penny, but it's a lot of stuff that I've never seen her enjoy or show much interest in. One year, the most excitement she showed was for the box, and she loves Disney movies and Paw Patrol, but never has she gotten gifts related to these things. Also, we suggested some gifts like a toy kitchen or something interactive and sensory, and they shut that down in favor of some expensive Lego, Star Wars Lego. She's five. I know damn well that's going straight to daddy's fun room. This year, I'm getting her an aerial doll and a matching dress. I'm stopping the madness. Oh my God, hell yes, OP. And yeah, good luck with this because the madness needs to end. Like this is bloody ridiculous. And the fact that they think they can do this, but yeah, you're doing the right thing, OP. The first step is to not entertain this sort of BS. I can't get over that. It's so rude. And yeah, so self-centered and so entitled. And yeah, the backstory about them and their toy collection didn't really do them any favors. They kind of sound even worse now. But yeah, good job, OP. You can't enable crap like this. The next one is called My Natural Hair Color is Too Much for My Mother to Handle. I didn't know where else to post this. My mom started taking me to hair salons to get my hair highlighted when I was around 10. I was never asking for it, but I went along with it because I thought it was cool that my mom was letting me bleach my hair. I got tired of it around a year later. I tried one time to get low lights instead of highlights, but it didn't work out. I didn't like arguing, so I stopped trying after that. I more or less let it go until about a year ago. When I told her I was going to grow out my natural hair color, I figured that since I'm an adult, it'd be easier. She agreed initially, but after a couple of months, she couldn't deal with how my roots looked, said that there was enough stress in her life already, and she didn't need one more thing on top of it all. Got back into a salon highlights again. I argued, but I got tired of it. Your hair color shouldn't affect their life at all. Am I missing something here? She is truly a good mother, and we are very close. You have to understand that she's not in the best place mentally right now, and I absolutely hate the idea of making her feel worse. Yeah, but this is not something that should make her feel worse, and it's kind of ridiculous for them to get upset about your hair color. I don't want to go into her issues because that feels wrong to do online, but it's important to note that she has always had people in her life controlling her hair too. She knows what she's doing, but can't bring herself to stop. I'm not asking for anyone to solve my problem. I know I'm an adult and I could start doing whatever I want regardless of her. I just needed a place to vent and maybe get some others' opinions on the situation. Edit. I clarified this in some comments, but I feel like it's necessary to add here. Her issue is with the color itself, not just the roots. Yeah, the top comment. She can't bring herself to stop, but you can. Mum, I'm not coloring my hair anymore. My hair, my choice. This is where the discussion stops. Walk into another room or hang up the phone. Don't engage with her on this subject. Yeah, a million percent. And if you feel like you have to do this OP or you should do this, then do it because it's completely your choice. And like surely your mum will get over it. Like it's bloody hair for God's sake. Not really something that needs to become an issue. But yeah, good luck OP. The next one is called In-laws want a free five-star holiday abroad. This story happened several years ago. We needed a witness at the consulate so my husband proposed his parents as they're both retired. They had to fly abroad and they wanted us to pay for their flights. Fine, yes, yeah, sounds reasonable. And then they said they needed a translator so my brother-in-law had to go with them. Fine, sounds reasonable. 
But then they said that we needed to pay for the hotel, fine. Then we needed to pay for my brother-in-law's language course and their two-month holiday in a five-star hotel because they were doing a favor. What the hell? I ended up calling my parents. Yeah, once again, like the top comment says, at least you got a serious heads up to how they are and are now forewarned about doing anything with them. Yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know and I'm not gonna ask again. The next one is called Should I Kick Around? I, 27 female and my husband, 29 male, live in the same building as my mother-in-law, 55 female. The owner of the building accepted selling it to me and I'm paying like a monthly rent until I pay it all off. Mother-in-law has no idea that I own it and she gives me rent money every month. I have two female Labradors and mother-in-law has one male Labrador and one mixed breed. So when my dogs were in the front yard, I used to feed all four of them out of my money and she would only clean if she was passing by and she sees some poop. Overall, it's either me or my hubby who cleans. Yesterday, I completed a kennel made out of concrete and all the heating and cooling things so the dogs have their own little house. And as they're both potty trained, we even put like a sand corner for them. I gave mother-in-law the previous house for her dogs, which is in perfect condition. And we also reminded her that from now on, she needs to step up and take care of her own dogs as we're expecting a baby and we'll use the extra money towards the baby instead of her dogs. She got so mad for that and started berating me and telling me that her son would never do that to a widow, etc. I cut her off and I told her that my dogs are now in the backyard and the left corner of the front yard is hers as long as she maintains it well and keeps the dogs in control. Last week, the postman accidentally gave my bills to my mother-in-law and she opened it and saw that I had insurance cover on my dogs since I bought them. In my country, we buy dogs and they usually stay outside. She's now angry at me and my husband for not getting insurance cover for her dogs and I've now been getting phone calls from everybody in the family telling me that I'm an awful person. I've been thinking of telling her that I'm the owner of the building as this is the last month of payment that I need to make and to tell her to pack her bags and find somewhere else to live. Yeah, like this comment says, a bunch of family members called but notice that none of them offered to insure the mother-in-law's dogs until the family members start contributing monetarily. Their opinion doesn't matter. Yeah, I was gonna say, the bloody family commenting on this, that's a bit much, isn't it? And also, like the top comment says, not the a-hole, but I wouldn't tell. I'd wait until it's all paid off and paperwork is in my name. Who knows what you might try with the family and or the landlord if you give her a heads up like that. Yeah, definitely. I don't feel like you should tell them that you own it. Maybe try and get them out of there first. The next one is called My Mother Got Rude With A Friend Of Mine and Wonders Why We Won't Help Her. My mum just assumes that my friends are just there to take her BS and I just waited until one of my friends just yelled at her. My friend Tyler can be entitled. But right now, my mother is the entitled one. She just expects my friends to take her abuse and just roll with it. Tyler decided to tell me that he won't be watching her dogs and cats on the next vacation. I was frustrated because now my mother expects me to use my paid time off and stay up at her house to watch the animals because as she said it, I don't have plans. Newsflash, the vacation isn't until July and the first weekend where I'll be at a convention and I already paid for the tickets. I told my mum who just said, well, can't you just go the week after? I told her that conventions don't work like that and she's gonna have to pay a pet hotel because I'm not giving up my paid time off just to be a pet sitter. I also had to remind her that I'm a grown ass adult and I've got a life. She's still acting all entitled and like I owe her something, which I don't. She doesn't seem to understand that she's acting like a jerk. It's almost Christmas and she has the goal to demand my paid time off to be used for her vacation. I'm saving my paid time off and I want to use it for either emergencies or time for myself. To sum it up, my entitled mother mouthed off to a friend and then decides I have to make time for her. Yeah, the top comment is so simple. F her and her BS. Yeah, honestly, OP, 100%. I'm sorry that you have to deal with stuff like this. But yeah, definitely don't give in to her BS. And also, just so you guys know, there is some mentions of suicide in this next post. You can skip to this time on the screen for the next post. The next one is called, Is it appropriate for my mum to track my location as I'm 28 years old? Okay, so I feel like we don't even need to read this. No, definitely not. It's really embarrassing that my mum still tracks my location and I'm almost 30. If I go somewhere she wasn't expecting me to go or is somewhere that she doesn't recognize, she'll text me, where are you? Like she can literally see where I am on the map. Why still ask me where I am? I know she's just nosy and wants to control me. I've tried turning off my location in the past and it resulted in a huge fit from her. So I turned it back on. But it's like, I feel like I have no privacy and I don't even live with her. I feel so stuck and I really want to break this hold that my mum has on me. I'm almost 30 freaking years old and my mum is still asking me where I am and when I'll be home. Now, when I was in college, I did attempt to take my own life a few times in my car. I overdosed on pills while I was in a parking lot. So I do recognize that she maybe has some anxiety coming from that.
bad, but I haven't been suicidal for years now. I was okay with her having my location for a few years after that because I understand that she has anxiety which I partially caused, but she has to trust me at some point and I feel like a child even though I live alone and pay my own bills. I can't seem to break this control that my mum has over. I know it's going to cause a huge fight if I turn my location off, so I just deal with it, but I need my independence. I'm going crazy. Yeah, OP, you're definitely going to have to stop this at some point, even if it does cause a fight. Yeah, like the top comment says, turn your location off and if she does flip out, just hang up and temporarily block her. She will get the hint eventually. Yeah, definitely. It's going to have to stop at some point. I feel for you though, OP. That's not a fun situation. The next one is called, I just wanted to be a kid. My mum's immigrant guilt ruined my childhood. My mum and I immigrated to the US in 1997. She met my stepdad through an international dating service. My life in America was never hard, so to speak. My mum always told me and my sister growing up that times were tough. As a kid, I never knew what it meant. My childhood was filled with the word no. As a kid, you're going to want toys and you're going to want to go do things with your friends. My mum always said no. And if I asked my stepdad, all he would say was go ask your mama, which always led to a no. Now, I will say this. I was never starved and I was given what I needed growing up, but it was always bottom of the barrel. I remember I asked my mum for a pair of Nike shoes once, and I really mean once. They were $65.99. And my mum looked at me and said, you're so greedy. You're so ungrateful for what you have. Your family back home could never afford nice shoes like that. Don't ever ask for shoes like that again. Until I got my first job, I wore Walmart and Kmart. My mum had drilled it into my head that me asking for things that any kid would ask for was wrong. That my family back home had it so bad that I'd be doing them an injustice just for having clothes or toys or video games when they couldn't. A side note that's important was when I came to America initially, my mum and stepdad did not want me to start school a year late, so I brain dumped Spanish and I learned English. It wasn't until last year, 2022, that I really started taking initiative to learn Spanish. Also, a side note about my parents, they have separate bank accounts and my stepdad claims that his money is his and my mum's money is hers. This will become relevant. Also, my mum would never pay for a ticket for me to visit our home country because she said it was too expensive and that I didn't speak Spanish anyway. I got to the point where I was very fluent in conversational Spanish. My original plan was to surprise my mum that I'd been practicing by getting in touch with my family members back in our home country. I was talking to one of my cousins and I asked her how her day was. She said it was okay, but she was waiting for the wire from my mum. At first, I thought that was some sort of slang that I was not familiar with, so I asked her to clarify what she meant. She then tells me she was waiting for my mum to send $800 down to them and that they were waiting at a West in Union for her moneygram to come in. At first I'm thinking something's wrong and I offer to help. My cousin says, no, your mum does this every month. I asked again if something was wrong and my cousin said no. So then I asked how long my mum has been doing this and she said since 1999. I asked her, has it always been $800? My cousin explains that every month is a little different but it's always been at least $600 a month. I said, all right, and I called my mum. I told her that our cousin told me about the money you've been sending down there every month. Since 1999, she said, yeah, for your grandmother's medicines. I called her out. No, it's not. You send the money because you feel guilty about living in America and they can't. So you send them money every month and they spend it on the same stuff that you've told me that I wasn't allowed to have because I was quite unquote greedy. I told her that during that conversation, I asked my cousin what type of clothes and shoes they wear. They said all the name brands that I was never allowed to look at. They took vacations on my mum's dime to Brazil, Peru and Puerto Rico. While I missed every single school field trip that required money, I got a job at 14 so I could help with groceries and buy my own clothes because I felt that I was costing my mum too much money. I explained that according to them, she would send at least 600 a month down there. That would mean that she sent over 170 grand. I told her she could have helped me and my sister get through college, but instead we had to take the student loan route. I asked her this question. Is the reason you never bought me and my sister tickets to go visit because you didn't want us to see the truth? Her reply. I brought you to America. You had it better than all of them. You're just ungrateful. I said, no, I... I just don't feel guilty about being here. If they really wanted to come here, they should have used the 170 grand you sent them. If you've made it this far, you might be wondering where my stepdad is in all this. His belief is, if the conversation's about money that isn't his, then it's not his problem. It was never about the clothes or the shoes. I felt so betrayed because I wanted to experience what other kids around me experienced. Not everything, but some things. As a kid, I was made to feel terrible for wanting anything because I supposedly had it better. I handed my mum my paychecks for years thinking that times were just too tough just to find out that I had nothing to feel guilty about. I feel like my childhood was taken away from me because I wanted all the things a normal kid was asking for. Yeah, I'm so sorry, OP. That sucks. And yeah,
yeah, like the top comment says, I'll never understand people who put their extended family before their own children. Yeah, and also like this comment says, I brought you to America so you could have a better life. Proceeds to send the better life back home. The next one is called 25 male. Is this normal behavior from my mom? So I'm 25 male and I'm currently living at home with my parents. I went on a run this morning like an hour and 30 minutes and I didn't tell my mom. My mom knows I usually go on runs every other day. My mom called a couple of times during the run, but I didn't see because my phone was on silent. My mom also tracks me using an app on my phone, but I disabled it to save battery. I can't tell my mom where I'm going all the time and what I'm doing. I understand that she might have been worried, but she has to at least trust me a little. Now she won't talk to me and also slammed the fitness tracker I gave her on her birthday in front of me, saying that she didn't want it anymore. Like, is it normal behavior for a parent to act like this? Like, I'm not 15 anymore. I'm 25. How do I deal with this? I usually tell them where I'm going. I was just in a hurry and I forgot. No, definitely not OP. Like this comment says, tell mum to grow up and act like an adult, not an eight-year-old child. No, it's absolutely not normal behavior. You're an adult. You can come and go as you please. Cousin abandoned my niece at my house while I was camping. Over the weekend, my husband and I went on a camping trip before summer season. With its glorious warm weather was officially over, we weren't at home and had no cell reception where we were. We left on Thursday the 7th of September and returned on Monday, September 11. While we were away, my cousin left my niece still strapped to her car seat outside my house door on Friday, September 8, and sent me some text messages. Remember, I had no cell reception where I was camping. I would never have known while I was gone. I I saw the missed messages after I returned home. It wasn't a request to ask if I can help her, it was a simple message notifying me that she left my niece in front of my door along with a bag with her stuff for the weekend. She didn't ask me beforehand if I could babysit. There was no possible way for me to know. Even if I did know, I would have still declined unless it was a medical emergency in the family and they had no other choice. I live in a rural area where everyone is on 30 acre plots of land, so no one knew that my niece was there. I had no clue and my neighbors had no clue. My niece was abandoned in front of my door until Saturday noon when my parents came by to drop off my parcels that were delivered to their house. That's when they saw my niece. My parents called my aunt and had her come pick her up. I can only assume that my parents, my aunt and my grandmother scolded my cousin for leaving my niece at my door. When I got home, all I saw was the initial message telling me that my niece was dropped off at my place. Then a string of very rude text messages and voice messages from my cousin calling me irresponsible for leaving my niece outside and endangering her. Oh my god, that's not you your fault? Because what if the coyotes in my area attack the helpless infant? I'm just so frustrated. Oh my god, I bet you are. That's revolting. And the fact that they blamed you for this? You're the one who left them there? Yeah, a million percent this comment. Report those parents. That's nuts. Yeah, I'm kind of shocked. I don't really know what to say about this. That's so bad. And the fact that they blamed you for this? Like, I hope their kid is safe. My 24 female mum demanded to be present during my gynecology exam and barged in. In. Edit, sorry for the confusion. I'm 24 currently and my mum is in her early 50s. My mum knew about my appointment and that I was going to be examined. Clothing would be removed. She wanted to accompany me last minute for support and I couldn't argue with her to stay home or I'd be late. I thought she'd wait outside. She has done so before, but for other types of appointments. But instead, she tried to go in with me. The staff kept her out and later she knocked on the door and walked into the appointment saying she needed to tell my doctor about my family medical history. I had already told my doctor all of it. She was taken out of the room and the door was locked. When I left the hospital, she wasn't there anymore and was upset that I kept her out. Oh my god, why? I told her it was a very private thing to be asked about your past relationships and getting examined. I'm extremely shy with my body and it's always hard for me to do these things. So of course I didn't want her there or even think for her to want to be there. She told me she wants grandchildren and she's my mum. Therefore, it's not that big of a deal for her to be with me during my visit and that I should stop acting like my body is sacred since I'd need to get used to other people people, medical staff seeing it. She also told me that my dad is always with her whenever she needs to be examined, so I should allow her to be there with me. I told her that a spouse is way different than a parent, and that since she hates to talk about horizontal mumbo, and has you know what shamed me in the past, she's super religious and hated to see me with anyone, there was no reason for her to be there. Edit, at the time of the appointment, I was temporarily living with my family, so she knew that I was going to go to the hospital and force me to tell her why. If I disagree with her, she'll 
try to make my life hell and make my family turn against me. Also, the appointment was not related to fertility or pregnancy. I don't live with them anymore, so she doesn't know about my life as I went low contact. This comment. Holy hell, is she gonna be there when your kids are conceived too? Yeah, boundaries. Have you ever heard of them? Well, the original poster actually commented this. She doesn't think there should be a boundary from her towards me. I always had these awful experiences with her, but I never knew they were not normal until I was an adult. My dad always sided with her and my family told me I needed to listen to her. Yeah, you definitely don't. <laughs> but yeah, that's so gross and entitled and they need to learn to respect your boundaries. And I'm sorry that you have to deal with this. Father covers for his new wife. He's surprised when I cut him out of my life. I'm starting this out by saying what's done is done. This has been a long time coming and it's well deserved. Please don't suggest I try to reconcile with my parent. Recently, I've come to learn that T, my stepmother, who's only been around for eight years and whom I don't care for, stole $768 from me, 32 male. When I spoke to my father, all he could do was complain about how many problems this is causing him, the stress on his heart and how it's damaging his relationship. He didn't apologize for what she did. He just made the phone call about himself. For a phone call that lasted an hour and a half, I probably spoke for 15 minutes or less. I told him we could talk about it when I get there and figure something out. He then suggested flat out that I can help him work to make back the money. Yeah, sure. Let me perform physical labor to earn the money that your wife stole from me and pocket you enough than 900. Yeah, that sounds great. I was coming in from out of state for a different reason and already planning on staying at the house. This is my childhood home with my room still furnished how I left it. Like my clothes are still in the dresser for when I visit. Plane tickets purchased and I send him the confirmation date. The next day, he then texts me that I'm no longer welcome at the house, that it's time I grow up and seek healthcare somewhere else, and that he just needed to know where to send the money. This throws all of my appointments into the void, and I had to cancel and rebuy plane tickets because of it, and now I'm staying with other family. I know he did it to protect my stepmother from the confrontation of facing me in person. She crumbles to dust if people raises their voice around her or curse too much, even casually. For reference, this woman is in such need of therapy that I cleaned and rearranged the kitchen one morning and they started crying and claimed that I was kicking her out of the house by making it not hers. All I did was do dishes and organize and clean the spice cabinet and pantry. He kept saying that it's for his health, that I'm not there and that it's too much stress. I have my own money and transportation and provide my own food. The duration of the trip was two weeks. I block him and my stepmother on everything. I asked my family to no longer speak to my dad about me. And this is all after a lifetime of abuse and narcissistic BS from my father. Now I hear through the grapevine that he's shocked and just couldn't believe I'd do this to him. My sibling already no longer speaks to him because of similar things. And him telling my brother to grow up and quit being a you know what after my sibling set a boundary with him. I had warned him before that if he kept up in his ways, casually racist, homophobic, blatantly inflammatory, he'd have no one to take care of him when he's older. And he didn't listen. If that wasn't enough, my late mum's last words to him were don't let the family fall apart. Way to go, dad. Thank you for listening. Wow, that's so sad. And yeah, obviously it's not your fault at all. But yeah, when the people in your life are like this, you are going to have a more peaceful life when they're not in it. And yeah, having to say that about your own family members is so sad. All the best with this. I'm sure it'll get easier. But yeah, I suppose that is one thing to look forward to. If you are no contact with them, then yeah, this stuff isn't going to happen. But yeah, so sad. My family's making fun of me because I like Animal Crossing and other childish things. I, female 24, love Animal Crossing and I've been obsessed with that game since elementary school. I bought the Nintendo Switch for the New Horizons game and my mother made fun of me. I tried to explain that it's not for children only and that she might like it. I was on vacation with my aunt this summer. I was ordering stickers to put on my phone case and my aunt noticed. Keep in mind that we just came back from visiting my father's cousin. She has an intellectual disability. So my aunt commented, are you sure that you're not the slow one? Wow, what? I was hurt and I lied about who I was purchasing the stickers for. She later talked to my mother on the phone and laughed about me because I'm slow. Oh my God, what? So you said you're 24. I'm 24. I play Animal Crossing. Literally every person I know plays Animal Crossing. People older than me as well. Because yeah, not only is what they said absolute BS, but even if something is childish, it doesn't mean you can't play it. Yeah, nah, you're not in the wrong here. And it's so awful that they're making you feel bad when they're the ones who are completely in the wrong and so rude. Children at the movie theater. I went for a movie today after a long time. During the trailers, a kid is listening to Baby Shark on high volume. Okay, I'm gonna ignore it because it's just the trailers. Once the movie starts, the Baby Shark stops. Well, 10 
10 minutes in and cue the kids screaming. The mother pacifies him with the tablet again. So now, along with the movie, we all listen to Baby Shark on blast. Like the entitlement of these parents. Finally, the people around them scream to shut that crap down. One hour in and another kid starts jumping up and down. Obviously, the kid is done with their attention span for the day. Her parents don't seem to care. People around them scream to get the kids seated. After probably half an hour, they leave the movie. Is a movie so important to these parents that they can't leave once they see their kids revolting? I finally remembered why I stopped going to the movies. It's thanks to the people around me who can't watch a movie in silence and not distracted by their phone. Yeah, I can't even imagine how frustrating that would have been. Baby shark during a movie? That's not something you want to hear during a movie. Well, to be fair, I don't know if that's something you ever want to hear. But yeah, why do people have to be so frustrating? Angry stepfather tries to make pregnant me climb a ladder. So my stepfather likes to garden. I do not. They have lots of fruit trees and a vegetable patch. I hate ladders and I always have. I can now climb with only some anxiety when I used to get a panic attack getting two rungs up. And I'm also 16 weeks pregnant with twins. My mother is injured and stepfather is disabled so he asked me to go pick some tomatoes and plums. When we go outside he said he'd get the ladder. I said I don't think I should be climbing one. He cuts me off and tells me to stop being dramatic as he'll hold it. He starts to unfold it and I say in a calm voice I'm really not comfortable climbing a ladder. He full on yells at me to just drop everything and go home then. I remain calm. I'm a teacher. I deal with tantrums all the time and I tell him I'm not saying that. He yells at me the same thing and then just to leave him to do it all. He's fallen multiple times and I told him I couldn't in case he fell. We don't speak as he drops plums into a bucket. He then ditches me and goes inside to pout and tattle to my mom. He tells her that I had a fit about being asked to climb a ladder. Her only response? Well, they don't climb ladders, you know that. Update, he's calmed down and sent an apology text. I haven't replied yet. Oh my god, why are they acting like this? You're a fully grown adult. Yeah, like the top comment says, how old is this man? Sounds like a toddler being told no. Yeah, that's so bad. And even if you weren't pregnant and you didn't want to go up a ladder, they still should have respected that. Like, that's already understandable, but it's a million times more understandable if you are pregnant. Like, yeah, fair enough. You probably shouldn't be climbing ladders if you're pregnant. Or like doing anything where you can fall and hurt yourself. Oh, that's so frustrating. The audacity. Customer doesn't understand the concept of paying for a gift card. So I work in a retail store and during my shift I was working on the till. For most of the day, the customers were normal, some moody, but not too bad. But then two women with a little girl showed up and they put three items on the belt. But they let their kid keep a PlayStation gift card. I asked if she'd already paid on another till for the gift card and she says no. So I asked if she's paying for it and she says no she just likes the cards then in a much louder voice says is there a problem i tell her that she can't just take a product from our store without paying policy plus the store gets robbed enough and she proceeds to huff at me loudly and then take the card out of her kid's hand and smacks it down on the counter saying it's pathetic and telling her kid that the man won't give us the card we'll get you one somewhere else she proceeds to glare at me as she leaves and then her friend pays and then shuffled out the door i know it's not the most exciting of encounters on here, but it's one of my first real entitled encounters in my job, so I figured I'd share. Edit, I think I may need to explain a bit more of the gift card. It was a PlayStation 1 that cost £10 to activate. My store only sells Amazon, Xbox and PlayStation gift cards, and we don't have any of our own. Also, my store policy is clear about taking any property, even a card they haven't activated is still not allowed as someone else could have paid for the card. Yeah, so obviously it's not going to work and there's going to be no money on it, but I think they know that because they said no, she just likes the card. Cards. It sounds to me like they're not trying to use the gift card, but they feel like because they're not putting any money on it, they should just be able to have it. Because yeah, they said no, she just likes the cards, as if they just want their kid to play with the card or something. But yeah, even still, it doesn't make it free, or they're trying to resell the card or something. But yeah, you can't just take it. My 61-year-old mum just found out the will of my deceased father's parents, and although she's given 20 grand, the rest of their estate goes to myself, 29, and my sister, 19. My mum has said to us that we have to to give our portion to her? Of course I'd give her money if she needed it but my dad died two years ago and she spent a million dollars of his life insurance on trivial stuff. My sister's disabled and easily manipulated so she said yes but I feel it's unfair to both of us to be expected to just give her money against what the will says. She's angry and called me selfish but it's in the will. I will give her some of it because she's my mum and I love her but surely I shouldn't be expected to give her everything. I feel a bit angry because she was very mean to me and also because my sister who is disabled and can't work full time might actually need this money to survive. Anyway, I appreciate any comments or advice. Update, 
we had a long chat and she apologized. She now only wants a small portion in acknowledgement of her being part of the family. Yeah, she still wants something, but it's up to me and my sister to decide where my grandparents are gone. She's still a bit entitled, but whatever. Hopefully things will blow over. At the moment, I'm okay with her having some, maybe 50 to 100,000 out of a million. But I'm sure that when I have kids, my priorities are gonna change. I'm gonna start trying with my husband in the next year or so. And I didn't make promises. My uncle, the executor of the will, found a letter from his father saying that they gave my mum 150,000 already as her inheritance earlier. And upon this realization, mum is somewhat appeased, as is he. I think things are okay for now. Thank you, everyone. I'm still gonna copy that will and keep it safe. But I believe the critical period is in the past. Also, she agreed that my sister would only match what I give, which is a major improvement. Oh yeah, that doesn't sound too bad. I love when by the time I read a post, it's already sort of resolved itself. But yeah, that's good. It sounds like everything's gonna be okay. And of course, because it's in the will, I'm pretty sure you don't have to give them anything. Yeah, like obviously you want to give them something, but it is pretty generous giving somebody who blew a mill even more money. The next one is called Entitled Mother Ignores Boundaries and encourages a child to open pet carrier in public. This happened just now. One of my pet rats suddenly became very ill. I rushed to the vets on public transport with another rat in the carrier to keep him company. The ill rat was admitted to hospital overnight and the outlook is not good. It's likely that he'll need to be euthanized. I was very upset as I got back on the train and as I got on a mother and daughter five-ish were gasping in delight at seeing a pet in a carrier. I started ugly crying when I sat down and I clutched the carrier. The mother and daughter sat next to me and the mother joyfully encouraged her daughter to ask me what pen I had. Oh my god, what? Read the room, lady. Oh my god. I started crying harder and I said, I'm sorry, I'm not in the mood to chat. I'll need to have an animal euthanized. You can have a look at my rat if you want. I turned away, I put the carrier on the seat next to me and cried more. A few seconds later, the woman is encouraging her child to open the carrier to play with my rat. Okay, he's a big softy, but the train was stressing him out. I pulled it away and I said, please don't do that. The woman pulls her daughter back and says loudly and passive aggressively, wasn't that lady rude? Well, what's wrong with people? The child starts laughing at me. I'm listening to sad music. My nose is running openly sobbing while the woman and her kid insult me. And then you took your rat out and you threw the carrier at them. No, I'm just joking. But for real though, what's wrong with people? What sort of a mood do you have to be in where you are actively making somebody else's day worse, being so inconsiderate, so rude and just invasive. Yeah, sorry that you had to deal with this. A parent lost his kid's travel document at the airport. So this dad is traveling to Greece with his daughter. Must have been 12 or 13 years old. He comes rushing to the boarding gate all chill like. Hey, we lost my daughter's ID card. Can you make an announcement? First of all, this is an airport. We can't randomly make announcements asking if anyone has seen your travel document. That's like making announcements at the mall asking if anyone found $200 on the floor. And you can't travel if you don't have your document with you. Are you kidding me? She's a child. We politely explained that we can't do that and they should go look for it while they still have time. We suggested they contact the passport control as there are staff looking around and cleaning and monitoring everything 24-7. And that if anything is found unattended, it immediately goes to the police. So the guy started yelling and calling us ridiculous. He left angrily leaving the girl on her own. Unattended at a gate full of strangers probably assuming that we'd look after her while we work. And 10 minutes later, he comes back demanding that we make an announcement again. And we explained again that that's not possible for security reasons. And at that point, boarding had started. So I had this douche yelling at me for not helping him find his daughter's ID card, which he lost while I was checking other people's travel documents and trying to contact the aircraft via radio. We couldn't listen to what the aircraft was asking for because this dude kept asking us for something we told him what he should do with. Eventually, he went to look for it again, obviously didn't go to the passport control and just came back at the end of the flight. We told him that without an ID card, the girl can't travel and thus we'll escort him back to the public area to book a new ticket. The girl was crying and sobbing at this point and he just started yelling at her, like yelled asking her why she's crying and then he just told her, let's go and I called for him to stop because they have to be escorted outside. His very mature response was something along the lines of F off before you piss me off too. They go to the passport control to try and get out themselves. They can't because they need to be escorted. And the girl's ID card was there. Surprise! He comes back running, yelling that they found it to which I passively told him that the doors are closed and it's too late now. Wait for another colleague to escort you outside. I left them there and walked away and so did my supervisor. I love how this dad not only lost his kid's travel document, yelled at her for it and demanded we take action for him, refusing to follow whatever we suggested to help. We couldn't leave the area for security reasons. And then when we explain what he has to do, he takes
takes off and then comes back expecting us to do him a service and help him. Some people shouldn't be parents. I felt so sorry for that girl. Yeah, so you told him to go to passport control and if they listened to you, surely they would have made the flight. Ask me to get out of the wheelchair spot on the bus for her stroller. I'm a wheelchair user and I was taking the bus like I always do. There are specific spots at the front of the bus that are for disabled people and the elderly to use. I was sitting in my wheelchair strapped into the bus and a woman with a twin stroller got on and asked me if I could get off so that she could put her stroller where I was parked. I told her that I would absolutely not. This spot was for disabled people, not her stroller. And she can take the next bus if she really needs to. She tells me she has an appointment to go to. So I tell her right back that she can fold her stroller up and go further into the bus if she really needs to take this one. But I'm not moving. She gestured at my crossed legs and had the balls to ask me to fold up my wheelchair and walk it further back. I am able to walk, but just not very much. I literally just started laughing and she accused me of faking my disability. She refused to move out of the front of the bus area where the driver can't have people and was kicked off the bus. Good luck getting to that appointment, lady. Yeah, it's unbelievable how rude some people can be. I feel like that's one thing I've learned from reading these episodes. Like, people can be so awful <laughs> and it's actually hard to believe. And also, accusing you of faking your disability? Why? Yeah, the bloody audacity. The next one is called My Mum has claimed a spare room in our house as her room. She doesn't actually stay here much, but I freaking hate it. We've always had this weird power struggle over my home and her staying there. I really don't think she's trying to be cute, but trying to establish her power over me by stomping my boundaries. She's only stayed over a couple of times. We don't live in the same city and I've corrected her each time that she refers to it as hers I say it's not your room it's the guest room I kind of thought that we were past this song and dance as the previous to last time she stayed she didn't say it so I let my guard down stupidly then the latest time she stayed over as I was carrying her things into the room for the night she quickly mutters it is my room isn't it nobody else has stayed in here it caught me by surprise so I didn't correct it this time and besides me and my husband it is technically true but that doesn't mean she has ownership over it either and then just yesterday she asked if she could stay over later this week as I'm checking my calendar she slips in a my room phrase so I corrected her it's not your room it's a guest room to which she stuck out her bottom lip in a pout and whines it is my room I start to repeat myself and she just talked over me before I could even finish about did you know where your roaster is the one that I got for you blah 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 yes I do know where the roaster is it's in the closet of the guest room so now I interrupt her and demand why were you in that closet and she proudly boasts I was snooping. I actually don't really care that she went in there, but the way that she proudly boasted about it really rubbed me the wrong way. And given the timing of it, it felt a lot like she was trying to hold more power over me when I was trying to establish my own boundaries. Yeah, that's definitely what's going on. I will absolutely be telling her on no uncertain terms. Will she be calling it her room again? If she does, it'll be the last time she stays in it. But I just wanted to rant about it. Oh, that's so frustrating. Yeah, you 100% need to turn this guest room into something else like make it a home office or something you know like completely take it away as a guest room and oh sorry mum it's not actually your room is it god that's so frustrating and i hope it does get better but you're a hundred percent right op they're stepping all over your boundaries and they're trying to show some of their power but guess what it's your house they don't have any even reading these is so annoying let alone being in that situation the next one is called entitled family harasses me after my boyfriend knocks brother-in-law on the ground so this this story happened a week ago. My sister was in town to visit with her husband and 11 year old son. My boyfriend isn't a huge fan of my sister's husband. My brother-in-law is as my boyfriend would describe, tactic cool. Basically he's really into military stuff even though he never was in the military. While my boyfriend was a US Marine for 5 years, when they met my brother-in-law tried to act all buddy buddy and even said, quote unquote, these people don't understand warriors like us. <laughs> Oh, that's so cringe. My boyfriend finds it annoying both that my brother-in-law is trying to claim warrior status while being a banker, and my boyfriend is not fond of the military after all it did to him, so he gets ticked off when people idolize it. But the problem started when they came over. It was a generally nice night other than a passive-aggressive remark by the brother-in-law when he learned I was not cooking, but in fact my boyfriend is. I'm a terrible cook and he's amazing at it, so generally he does cook. After dinner, we're all getting caught up in the living room and their son Jack was getting 
bored and started walking around. My boyfriend got up after him to watch over him as an excuse to get out of the conversation. This is what my boyfriend said happened. He followed Jack around the house until Jack said that he was bored. Trying to be a good uncle, my boyfriend offered to show him his office and they went inside. My boyfriend is protective of his office. Only him and I are allowed inside, so this was a big deal. But my boyfriend wanted to be a good host and a good uncle. So he showed Jack around the office, showed him his Warhammer armies, the knives that he got, his gaming PC, and everything else. Boyfriend has too many hobbies. Until they got to a locked cabinet, Jack asked why it was locked. My boyfriend explained that his guns were in there, and if his parents allowed it, he'd take Jack shooting one day. A little while later, my brother-in-law followed them into the office. My boyfriend was annoyed that he was in there, but felt that he couldn't kick him out as his son was in there, and he had the right to be there. Brother-in-law started talking to him about my boyfriend's guns and wanted to see them. My boyfriend was hesitant, but felt there was no harm because brother-in-law is a grown-ass man. Also, he keeps the ammo in the garage across the house. He opened the cabinet and asked my brother-in-law not to touch them unless he hands them to him. My brother-in-law ignores this, grabs a gun from a rack, does not check if it's clear. My boyfriend emphasizes that that was a huge no-no and then starts waving it around. My brother-in-law then thought it'd be funny to pretend to shoot his son, so he pointed the gun at Jack. Oh my god. My boyfriend reached for the gun, knocked brother-in-law to the ground and secured it and then all hell broke loose. Brother-in-law started screaming at my boyfriend and my sister ran to check what was going on and then my sister started screaming about how my boyfriend could let her son near a gun. My boyfriend isn't a yeller. He's not afraid of confrontation but he never yells. He just calmly put his gun away, locked the cabinet and looked at me with a these people are idiots look and waited for a lull in the screaming. He told them to get the F out. Brother-in-law got in his face and acted like they were gonna fight. My boyfriend just stared him down until brother-in-law backed off. Boyfriend six foot three and muscular and carries himself like a former marine. He basically just stared my sister and brother-in-law out of the house. Never raised his voice, never said anything threatening. But after that, the story my family was told is that he's a sociopath with an arsenal, has PTSD, and all of them are blowing up my phone trying to get me to leave him. Oh, right when you think it can't get any worse, it does. Apparently they even called the cops, but we live in his hometown. The local sheriff taught my boyfriend how to hunt as a kid, so the sheriff knew that it was a BS report, but still reached out to me to confirm. I assured him and my family countless times that he's not dangerous or hurting me. It's starting to get to me and I don't know what to do. My boyfriend is concerned for my mental health but he told me that he couldn't care less what they were saying about him. I'm probably gonna go low contact until this blows over. I'm glad that we live a couple of states away so they can't harass me in person. Wow, unbelievable. What's wrong with the family? Your brother-in-law pointed a gun at his own son. Obviously they're in the wrong. Oh, that's so awful that they think the boyfriend is the issue. And yeah, all you have to do is tell your family that they pointed the gun at their own son. If they don't understand when you say that, that's their issue. Yeah, that's so wild. I can't believe the stuff that we read. And with that being said, let's read the next one. My mum is insistent that I have a C-section so that my dad can schedule their visit for the birth of my daughter. I don't know where to begin. I just need a place to vent. I, 31 female, am due to have my first baby in just over five weeks time. My pregnancy was a surprise and it has been a difficult eight months though far. Although low risk, I have experienced every symptom you can imagine, from intense morning sickness to migraines and carpal tunnel. I've also faced some pretty intense discrimination at work despite maintaining a high rate of performance during the year. All of this to say it's been a rough year. I've had little support from my family this year, and their nonsense has seemingly known no bounds. Since around May, they've been asking my partner and I to make the 10-hour drive into state for Christmas so that we could spend it with them. This would be fine, but my doctor has repeatedly told me not to do this, as I'll be 36 weeks at that point and prone to blood clots. Despite this, they've continued to pester my partner and I about it. At one point, they proposed coming to us for Christmas, but then swiftly shut down their own idea when they immediately realized it would be an inconvenience to them. Recently, my dad was diagnosed with some health problems of his own, which he's been told is completely treatable with surgery and some medication. Regardless, I've called every other day to check up on him and see how he's going. In the last few weeks, my mama started telling me how awful birth was for her and every other woman on both sides of my family. I kid you not, every time she calls, she encourages me to plan a C-section and drop some new detail about a relative who had a traumatic birth experience. I have told her that her comments are unhelpful and she's known for months that I don't want a C-section if I can help it. She constantly says things like, if I had my time again, I'd plan a C-section, as if it's an easier option. I wondered why she started down this path until she started making comments about dad's treatment plan and appointments, such as, we might be able to make it out to see you for a few days in January but dad might have to go to an appointment on the 18th and then again on the 31st and then after that we can't visit for a 
while because dad might need a surgery. I snapped and I told her I would not plan and I could not plan the birth of my child around their schedule and that they shouldn't bother coming. They haven't even asked my partner or I if we even want extended family present directly after the birth and we don't. I was so scared about the birth and I was starting to feel somewhat comfortable with the idea of it all. When my mum started making these comments, every time I've told her that I'm upset about the comments or their lack of normal healthy support, my mum has told me that I'm just hormonal and that everybody else has their own thing going on. I'm so sick of their crap and I'm ready to cut them off for some time. I feel like they've made the birth of my little girl all about them. Yeah, definitely seems like it. They've compared the potential surgery that my dad might need to my birth, talking about catheters and IV drips like I won't need similar, particularly if I go down the C-section route. When they did come to visit earlier in the year, they made comments about what I was eating. I was 24 weeks pregnant at that point. One of my unhealthy options, as they said, were a few chocolates after dinner. I don't even know what to say or do. All of this has made me reflect on my childhood and I can't help but feel sad about that too. I've spent the last few weeks just crying about it and I'm so tired of venting about it to my partner. Thank you for reading if you've come this far. I just needed to vent. Oh, that's so sad and I'm so sorry, OP. The top comment says it as well and a lot of comments say it, but it does definitely sound like you should have the baby without telling them and then tell them a couple of days after the baby's born. Like, yeah, you've tried to get them to understand and by the way, you're not just being hormonal. That's only your mum trying to excuse her behaviour and trying to shift the blame onto you. But yeah, it doesn't sound like the family should have any part in this birth. By the sounds of it, they're only going to make it harder. Oh, that's such a crappy situation. I'm sorry to hear that OP and I hope it does go well. Oh, the next one is an update to the post with the brother-in-law and the gun. Update, entitled family harasses me after boyfriend knocks brother-in-law to the ground. I thought it would be best to make a new post. Thank you all for all your supportive comments and I'm sorry that I haven't responded, but there's some stuff that's happened. I followed your advice and I contacted the family members I'm closest with and I told our side of the story to mixed responses. Some people believed us, but unfortunately most either didn't believe us or they did but still pushed me to leave my boyfriend. Apparently the thought that a man could disarm and knock a person to the ground is so violent that only a PTSD ridden psychopath could commit such an act. One surprising good thing that came out of this is that apparently the sheriff who was an old friend of my boyfriend and his father reached out to boyfriend's father and his family started coming in for support. It was a bridge that needed to be built, albeit in a weird way. I never dug much into it but boyfriend was estranged from his family. Basically, he's the son of some local powerful man. His mother, who died a while ago, was physically and mentally abusive and his father didn't know because he was busy at work. Boyfriend was expected to go to an Ivy League college and be some politician or something. Boyfriend believed that that would be selling his soul so he ran off and joined the Marines. He just needed to run away from that life and it just festered for years. Neither party brave enough to reach out until this incident. His entire family reached out to offer support. His brother and his wife came over a few nights ago to meet me and have dinner. His father put us in contact with his lawyer in case they tried again and were planning a dinner with the whole family. Boyfriend seems happy and honestly both me and him feel like we re-found a family. My family has been thoroughly unsupportive of me and this isn't the first time. After telling my side I went no contact with them and I hope that's the end of it until my sister, my other one, not the mother of Jack, called me this morning and told me she was visiting and she's already in the state and wants to know her address. Completely blindsided me but I guess it could be an opportunity to clear the air. But I know for damn sure if I'm meeting her I'm bringing my boyfriend and a voice recorder. I read way too many stories on here to not take precautions. I'll update after the meeting. All I can do is hope it doesn't make anything worse. Yeah like the top comment says. So what only a deranged nutter with PTSD could disarm a completely untrained lunatic acting like a moron? A trained marine reacting appropriately to a situation couldn't but another could? What the hell do your family think marines are trained to do? Tickle fish and paddle in kiddie pools? Christ. I'm glad things are looking good on the other side. Good luck with your sister. You never know she might not be a complete idiot. Yeah what the hell's wrong with the family? Oh that's so awful and what do they have against the boyfriend? Cause surely it's not just this. Like surely this isn't the sole reason they want them to break up with them. Oh. And also the bloody audacity for them to even feel like they can say stuff like that. Yeah they sound awful. The next one is called Entitled Parents Don't Change a Kid's Diaper on a Cross-Country Flight. The parent sitting in front of us had a toddler whose diaper started to smell about halfway through the five and a half hour flight. They didn't change it. So for hours we were forced to smell this kid's diaper. What's so frustrating is that it isn't good for the kid either. I know that changing tables on planes aren't great, but we shouldn't all have to smell your kid's diaper for hours. Yeah, definitely not. So what are the parents doing in a situation like this? Are they just lazy? Like what's their excuse? Surely they don't want to smell it either. And yeah, that's right. Imagine it from the kid's perspective.
perspective. Oh, they've got to sit in that. <laughs> Ew. That's so frustrating. Oh, our child has soiled themselves. Let's make sure it's an issue for every single other person on the plane. Let's definitely not sort this out. We'll all just sit here and smell it the entire time. The next one is called Entitled Mother Leaves Her Children in the Kids Section of a Department Store. Okay, we're going back in time to 2004 when I worked at a chain department store. Let's just call it La Bon Bon. Ha uh ha. -huh. I was 22 years old at the time and I floated between the departments. That evening I was covering the kids department by myself, facing and folding and fixing the tables, checking the changing rooms etc. A woman and three small children, let's say three, five and seven if I had to guess, were at a table pulling out shirts to hold them up and then tossing them back in crumpled heaps, forming a pile. Her kids joined in, making a mess as well. Ugh. I'd have to straighten and then fix the entire table. The woman and her kids move along. I fix the table which takes some time before returning to the counter. I hear kids laughing and shrieking. Close to the counter in the kids section, we had a little round sitting area facing a wall of TVs. Various kid-friendly shows played on low volume on each screen. It was a chaotic scene to behold. The three kids were there jumping and climbing all over the short benches. No mother in sight. I do a quick search and I can't find her. I get my manager next. LP is pulled in. We talk to the kids who were super hyper to get their mother's name. We call her over the loudspeaker and we wait and no one comes. Our LP contacts more security. They call her over the loudspeaker. Ten minutes later she comes storming in furious. A bag from another store and a huge cup from the food court in her hands. She demands to know why we called her. We explain the situation with her kids being left unattended in our store and she flips out stating that the girl, and she points at me, is there to watch the kids in the kids section and that's why there's a big wall of TVs there and so mothers can go shopping stress free. Oh the audacity. LP and my manager tell her that's not how it works. She asks if we have any idea what it's like to go out shopping with three young kids in tow. She's frothing at the mouth. At this point her kids are tearing up tables again, running and screaming, having a blast. She's asked to leave and throws her cup of soda on the floor. Before we can do anything else she grabs up her smallest child and shrieks at them that they're leaving. La Bon Bon is the most horrible place ever and that she'll be calling corporate about her misconduct. It's been 20 years. Sometimes I still wonder how those kids turned out. Wow so their children are your responsibility because they don't want to look after them. Oh, that's so infuriating. Take responsibility for your children. Oh my god. That is so unbelievably annoying, but I feel like we should read one more. My entitled mum decides to be arch me out for having a life. Apparently this is recent, and honestly I'm kind of glad that future brother-in-law was able to see it. I went to a convention which of course my mother decided to gaslight me over. She's not allowed to see my nephew and I can see why. My mother from the time I was seven to present is a control freak. She literally gaslit me tonight over the fact that I was at work and I also worked a convention the entire weekend instead of calling her. She said I don't care about my nephew or her and she's the reason why I don't mention having friends or a life. I can't have hobbies because that's weird to her. She demands me to give private emails between future brother-in-law and I to her. Like seriously, we don't even talk about her. Yet she demands I give her information. Now I know why future brother-in-law was so insistent that I cut my mother off. My mother doesn't want me to volunteer at conventions unless she okays it first. And I have to give up all the club memberships, even book clubs because she thinks they're weird. I'm only her daughter when it's convenient for her and yet I'm supposed to just be her slave. I'm so done and I just want to disappear at the moment, but I have to work. Apparently having a life is being her parrot. Maybe it would be nice to just move away and cut her off, but that means leaving dad to deal with her. So what do I do? Yeah, like the top comment says, leave her. Your dad can take care of himself. A million percent. And that's enough for today. Let's read something a lot more wholesome. This dog's first night at his new home after being rescued from a shelter. Wow, that's so cute. They're so happy and so grateful. I'm so happy we read this today. He's small, he's scruffy, and he loves his little cape. Oh, the beautiful little baby. It feels so good to read these wholesome memes after everything we've read today. The entitled people can become a little bit much sometimes. Five-year-old me working hard on the homemade gift that I'm making for my mum's birthday. Oh, that's so cute and so true. I'm gonna put all my effort and all my strength into this. It's gonna be the most meaningful present ever. And once again, thank you for watching everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want
want to see more Entitled Parents episodes, make sure you like and subscribe and let me know down below what you thought. And the comment of the day today goes to FluffyKitten5471. These videos are cool. So many wholesome stories in this one. Definitely a good change of pace from all the infuriating stories that you usually read. Yeah, I think that was the Tales About Retail episode, which has turned out to be such a wholesome series for the channel. And yeah, I'm so glad you enjoyed the episode. Thank you for all your ongoing support, guys. That means so much to me. Everything is going awesome and I'm so grateful to have you here. And with that being said, make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!